Hello, planet Earth! It's me, Graham, professional astronaut, broadcasting live from outer space. You know, not a lot of people thought I would make it all the way to Saturn, but you know what? They were right. <laughs> it's just a costume. I'm still, I'm still on Earth. I love to dress up and pretend to be other people. Don't you? I mean, I love to dress up in costumes and wear scary makeup or funny masks. It's out of this world <laughs> because, I'm an, because I'm an astronaut. Oh, but today we're talking about what it's like to live our lives without masks, without costumes. What it's like to live with integrity. Now, integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. It's harder than it sounds to live with integrity. There's so many reasons to pretend to be someone you're not. I mean, you may want people to think you're funny. You may want your teachers to think that you're smart. E equals MC squared. The capital of Mongolia is Ulaanbaatar. A woodchuck can chuck 32 cords of wood. And you probably want your friends to think that you're cool. Cool kids still dress like this, right? See what I mean? It isn't always easy to just be true to who you are. In today's story, we'll learn about some guys who were under a lot of pressure to be like everybody else. We'll find out if they were able to stay true to who God made them to be. I'll be back in a moonit. <laughs> Instead of a minute, it's moon it. Because I'm in space. <laughs> Maybe I should dress up as the clown again.
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Daniel, chapter 1. Daniel was only a very young man when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon conquered the land of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar made sure that God's people wouldn't rebel by taking Daniel and other young men from royal families in Judah and marching them back to Babylon with him. Will we ever see our home again? Daniel's friends were just as scared and confused as he was. Where will we live? What will he do to us? I sure hope the food is decent. Daniel tried to reassure them as the imposing city gates rose ahead. God will be with us, whatever happens. The king chose the brightest and best young men from Judah and ordered that they receive special training. After three years, you will get to be very important and serve me. The chief official Ashpenaz took charge of Daniel and his friends. <laughs> tut tut, those wishy-washy Hebrew names just won't do. You need new ones. New what? Names. <laughs> Let's see. Daniel, we'll call you Belteshazzar. And you three will be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> Are those names or is he just sneezing? You'll learn our language, of course. And all the Babylonian writings? <sighs> Daniel's heart sank as he realized what was happening. The king wanted Daniel and his friends to forget they were God's people. He wanted them to become Babylonians. But Abednego was worried about something else. Hey, I, I'm about to starve. Any way we can get a bite to eat? <laughs> right this way. Ashpenaz led Daniel and his friends to a big table set with mouth-watering foods. Mmm, steak. Or those Babylonian buffalo bites. The cake's got at least nine layers. Only the best, straight from the king's table. <sighs> oh, the food smelled delicious. But Daniel pulled his friends aside. Guys, if this food is from the king's table, that means it's been offered to false gods first. Uh-oh, not good. Our new names and training are one thing, but if we eat this food, it's like we're saying we're okay with false gods. But we gotta eat something, man. We can ask for different food, simple stuff that hasn't been offered to the false gods. With that chocolate cake! A band that go! Okay, okay. Daniel and his friends turned back to Ashpenaz. They tried to ignore the delicious smells wafting from the table. Uh, this all looks great, but could we eat something that's not from the king's table? It doesn't need to be anything fancy. The king is my master. He's decided what you must eat and drink. What if you don't eat this and he sees you looking worse than the other young man? He might kill me. No matter what Daniel said, Ashpenaz was too fearful to listen. So Daniel approached the guard assigned to take care of them. Please. Just test us for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. See how we look then. Hmm. Well, if Brussels sprouts are your thing. For 10 days, the guards gave Daniel and his friends nothing to eat but veggies and water. I could get into the habit of cabbage. I like broccoli, probably. P pass the peas, if you please. I just want a hamburger. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy to say no to all those delicious foods the other young men got to eat. But at the end of 10 days, the guard called everybody out. Line them up. He strode past the other young men. Good, good. I can see you've been eating well. When the guard reached Daniel and his friends, he stopped in surprise. What? You've been eating rabbit food, but you look even better fed than the others. <laughs> Daniel smiled. God had helped them grow strong even without eating the food offered to false gods. Okay, fine. You can keep eating veggies and water. 
Rats. Thank you. God continued to give Daniel and his friends knowledge and understanding as they studied, and at the end of their training, they were brought before the king. Let's see what you know. How many inches in a meter? 39.3701. Hmm. What do you call a group of porcupines? A uh, prickle. If it takes eight men ten hours to build a wall, how long would it take four men? No time at all, because the wall's already built. Hmm. How are you all so smart? The one true god gives us wisdom. Hmm. Well, we'll see about that. Anyhow, you're ten times smarter than my other advisors. You get to be very important and serve me. Daniel and his friends eventually became the king's most trusted advisors, and even though they served the king of Babylon, they never stopped standing strong for the one true God in everything they said and did. Okay, so... Daniel and his friends were in a really bad situation. They were taken from their homes and they were forced to be some king's servant. But even then, they chose to be true to themselves. They chose to live the way God wanted them to live. You see that kind of integrity a lot in the Bible. I mean, think of Jesus. He was always true to himself. Jesus could have gone along with the crowd, but instead he lived the way he knew was true, even when it meant giving up his life for you and me. So how can we be true with our lives? Well, it's great if you want people to think that you're fun or funny, but not if it means, say, hurting someone's feelings to get a laugh. I have no idea how to make balloon animals. And being cool is cool, you know? But if you have to pretend to be something that you're not so people think that you're cool, that's not cool. Cool? What's another word for cool? So here's the one thing to remember today. Be truthful with your whole life. You can choose to be who God made you to be. I mean, to be honest and true in what you say and in what you do. Like I said before, it isn't always easy. So ask God for help. That's one small step for you, and one giant leap for integrity. <laughs> Goodbye.